Hello friends, welcome to Vivid Kemi YouTube channel. This is Vidya Shri. So this is part 6 video on solution to Karnataka TET Mathematics and Science question paper of the year 2020-21. So I have solved the questions from question number 91 to 120 in my previous videos. If you have not watched those videos, you can watch those videos by clicking on the i button appearing on the screen. So in this particular video, I'll be discussing the solution to the science part of the question paper. Question number 121. Identify the correct statement among the following with respect to G and G. So here, this small letter G is representing acceleration due to gravity. And capital letter G that represents universal gravitation constant. This question is from the gravitation chapter of class 9. I have done a video on important points that you need to remember from the gravitation chapter of class 9. If you have not watched that video, you can watch it by clicking on the i button. So they have given four options. Option 1, universal gravitation constant is constant and G varies. Option 2, G is constant and capital G varies. Option 3, both are constants. Option 4, both are variable. The right answer here is option 1. Universal gravitation constant is a constant and acceleration due to gravity that varies. So the value of universal gravitation constant is 6.637 into 10 to the power minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. Whereas the acceleration due to gravity, its average value is 9.8 meter per second square, but this varies and the value of G is greater in poles and it is lesser in equator. So therefore the right answer here is option 1. Question number 122. A cyclist is riding on a circular path with constant speed of 22 meter per second. He takes 7 seconds to complete one round. Then find the radius of the path. Option 1, 24.5 meters. Option 2, 2.45 meters. Option 3, 0 0.245 meters. Option 4, 15.4 meters. The cyclist is riding on a circular path with the constant speed of 22 meter per second. So the speed is 22 meter per second. So the time he takes is 7 seconds and we are asked to find the radius of the circular path. Say the cyclist if he starts from this particular point he moves along the circular path and he reaches the same point again. So means the distance he covers is equal to circumference of the circle. So distance covered by the cyclist is equal to circumference. So circumference of the circle is given by 2 pi r. Now we will use the formula that speed is equal to distance by time. So s is equal to d by t. Speed is equal to distance by time. So here distance is nothing but it is the circumference. So it is 2 pi r divided by time is t. So now in this case we can find the radius using this particular formula. Speed is given. It is 22 meter per second. So speed is 22. 2 into pi is 22 by 7 we will consider. And radius is what we have to find. We don't know that. Time is given. It is 7 seconds. Here this 22 and 22 gets cancelled. 7 so both the 7s are in denominator. So 7 into 7 is 49 divided by 2 is equal to R. So this means that R is equal to 24.5 meters. So therefore the right answer here is option 1, 24.5 meters. Question number 123. 
cricket ball of mass 500 grams and a tennis ball of mass 250 grams are moving with same velocity then which among the following statement is true option 1 cricket ball is having maximum momentum option 2 tennis ball is having maximum momentum option 3 both the balls have same momentum option 4 both the balls have zero momentum we know that momentum is given by product of mass and velocity so let me consider the momentum of cricket ball as p1 so which is given by m1 into v velocity i'll consider it as v itself because they have given it's traveling with same velocity say for example for tennis ball i'll consider the momentum as p2 which is given by m2 into v so now here clearly you can observe that momentum for the cricket ball as well as tennis ball is now directly proportional to its mass that means as mass increases momentum will also increase so among the cricket ball and the tennis ball mass of cricket ball is 500 g and tennis ball is 250 g so mass of cricket ball is greater so here m1 is greater than m2 which means that p1 is greater than p2 so the momentum of cricket ball is greater than that of tennis ball therefore the right answer is option 1 cricket ball is having maximum momentum question number 124 among the following identify si unit of frequency and wavelength respectively option 1 meter comma hertz option 2 hertz comma meter option 3 decibel comma candela option 4 candela comma decibel so here they have asked us to find the si unit of frequency and wavelength so si unit of frequency is hertz and wavelength is meter so therefore the right answer in the correct order is hertz comma meter right answer is option 2 hertz and meter so here we have other two units decibel so it is unit of sound and also we have the other option candela so it is the unit of luminous intensity question number 125 power of a lens is 2.5 diopter its focal length is option 1 40 cm option 2 4 cm option 3 0.4 cm option 4 0.04 cm so they have given power of the lens it is denoted by capital letter p which is equal to 2.5 diopter power of lens is the reciprocal of its focal length so this is a very very important so they are asking us to find the focal length so we can just rearrange the formula so as to get the focal length it is the reciprocal of power so it is 1 by 2.5 diopter so 1 by 2.5 is nothing but 0.4 we got the answer as 0.4 now here the unit is meter so it's because 2.5 diopter it means that it is 2.5 meter inverse okay so therefore the unit of focal length that we get here is 0.4 meter so don't mark your answer as 0.4 cm so if you mark this answer your answer will go wrong so this is not the right answer now 0.5 meter is the focal length so check the units of the given options all are mentioned in cm now you have to convert this 0.4 meter into cm so just multiply it by 100 so we get 40 cm so therefore focal length of lens with the power 2.5 diopter is 0.4 meter which is equal to 40 cm therefore the right answer here is option 1 40 cm be careful with the units do not forget to do the unit conversions question number 126 identify the character of human eye used in cinematography option 1 accommodation option 2 persistence of vision option 3 least distance of distinct vision option 4 all the three characters the right answer here is option 2 persistence of vision it is used in cinematography so persistence of vision means if the object disappears for the next second also we can imagine that object is there in front of our eye so that particular character we call it as persistence of vision 
question number 127 identify the correct relation between potential difference and current option 1 v is directly proportional to i square option 2 v is directly proportional to 1 by i option 3 v square is directly proportional to i option 4 v is directly proportional to i so we know that as voltage increases the current flow in the circuit also increases so the voltage and current are di directly related that means option 4 is the right answer question number 128 when a rectangular copper coil is rotated in the magnetic field, the direction of induced current changes after how many rounds? Option 1, 1 rotation. Option 2, 2 rotations. Option 3, half rotation. Option 4, quarter rotation. So the right answer here is option 3, half rotation. So it's after every half rotation, the direction of induced current will change. Question number 129. The metal used as a thin protective layer upon iron in the process of galvanization. Option 1, gallium. Option 2, aluminium. Option 3, zinc. Option 4, silver. Galvanization is a process where metal is coated with a thin layer of zinc. So therefore, the right answer here is option 3, zinc. Question number 130. The two main properties of gold helps the goldsmith to make ornaments. Option 1, lustrous and ductility. Option 2, non-lustrous and sonorous. Option 3, sonorous and malleability. Option 4, good conductivity and sonorous. So it is the lustrous and ductility property of the gold that helps goldsmith to make into ornament. Lustrous means the shiny nature. Ductility means the metals can be made into thin wires. Sonorous means they produce sound. So these are all the qualities or the properties of metals that they are lustrous, they are ductile and they are malleable which means that they can be made into thin sheets. They are sonorous which means they produce a sound and they are good conductors of heat as well as electricity. All these are the properties of metals. So, especially the lustrous and ductility of gold helps goldsmith to make ornament. And therefore, the right answer here is option 1. I will stop this video here. Remaining questions will be discussed in my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Like and share the video if the contents provided are useful to you. Subscribe to my channel for more updates.